Good morning. It's day 10 and I'm at the magical Day de la Tour. And you can't really see it because the light's reflecting off of it, but I'll show you a bit more. Just got up. The night wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. I do miss my CPAP. I really do need it. <laughs> now my throat is pretty hoarse. Um, but, uh, all in all, I, d I did pretty well. I was lucky it was warm last night. Going back to get my spoon. Hoping this takes me there. <laughs> it might not. I heard a new expression for me on the road yesterday. Ça vaut la pain. It's worth the pain. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was able to go to the Science and Technology Museum in Ottawa, and I saw a rocket. Um, and it quite surprised me because I looked at the metal around the rocket and it was as flimsy as could be. And I couldn't believe that they would send such a thing up into space. But I realized later that the whole concept of a rocket is the minimum possible needed to do the job. So it's basically, and this goes back to Goddard's rockets, uh, a metal frame and you attach a bunch of stuff to it, you know, balls of hydrogen and oxygen in your payload. And you put a thin, thin wrapping around it just for aerodynamics and that's it. And so that's a rocket. And so we have the rocket. And normally we think of rockets as being fast or powerful, and this bicycle is neither of those, obviously. No, this bicycle is the minimum necessary to do the job. It's just a metal frame with some stuff attached to it, and uh, we've never mind about the aerodynamics. Yeah, the rear wheel isn't even round anymore. The minimum necessary to do the job. The rocket. I'm on my way out of Bay de la Tour campsite now. There'll still be more to see in this area. I thought at first this was the gatehouse, and I was thinking, you know, who did they think is ever going to stop at this gatehouse, you know, just drive up? But I took a closer look, and no, it's packed to the rafters with firewood um, and boarded in, uh, with screws shut. So, even more mysterious. <laughs> Here's another road report for you from Stephen's helicopter. This is right at the entrance of Bay de la Tour, camping on the left, bay to the right. For some reason, a, kiloma, a kilometer apart from each other. The road, as you can see, is in pretty good shape. Just a small country road. Uh, there's some flooded bits after the rain, but... Uh, Normally, they'd just be sort of big round divots. And uh, goes uphill from there and pretty much continues. Uh, it's a good road all the way. Despite what people may have told you. That's the actual Bay de la Tour itself, and if I jump, it's because I'm being bitten by mosquitoes. And if you look back here, that's the ocean. This is the interior of Bay de la Tour. Just over that ridge there on the right is the Gulf of St. Lawrence, in other words, the ocean. I'm not sure whether this water would be fresh or salt, maybe a combination of both. I do know I heard loons calling all night last night. They're haunting, don't know what else to call it, song. 
and then all along the side of this is swampland. That of course is where they put the campground. So it's been all uphill, not surprisingly, from Bay de la Tour. And uh, I'm ducked into some shade right now. Um, yeah, the hills have been killing me, admittedly. But the other thing, surprisingly, is the heat. I mean, it's 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't know what that is in Celsius, but it's plenty. But this unrelenting blue sky, this beautiful blue sky, which you'd really love for your summer weather, is gonna get up to 73 in the sky. And doing this kind of effort in this kind of heat uh, is a bit hard. And that's what's been draining me yesterday and also today. Continuing with the road report, um, you have to watch out on this road. There are places where the water is crossing and it's formed a bit of a deep gully. And if you hit that going downhill, you might find yourself and your bicycle and all your gear strewn all over the road. So caution is warranted going down hills. This is Grotte de la Baie de la Tour or the cave of the Bay de la Tour. I heard running water and I thought, well, maybe I can get some, but uh, uh, maybe not. <laughs> this is how I feel right now. <laughs> well, I'm back at the waterfall. You have to manage your water out here. You're coming back from uh, Bay de la Tour, maybe the first 500 meters, there's lots of water supplies. Nice little streams falling off the side of the hill. Then for the next 10, 12 kilometers, there's basically nothing. <laughs> then there's a few rivers just as you approach uh, the waterfalls here. And, but once you're at the waterfall site, Ironically, there's no water. On my way back from Bay de la Tour, I started here, went up the hill and passed this turnoff. Got a ride starting about here up to the Voreal Falls. Stayed there for a while, then continued on my way down the hill along this road. Got a ride starting around here that took me to my cache and then up to Camping Wilcox. Lunch. It's a slightly melted cliff spar. Top of the hill. This one just about broke me going the other way. Now it just looks nice. For now. Well, I'm back at Camping Wilcox. 62 kilometers away from Bay de la Tour where I started. It's the middle of the day. How did I do that? Well, I cycled about 20 kilometers worth and got a ride for the remaining 40 kilometers worth. It only made sense in this heat and I'm not apologizing. I'm just grateful because now I'm here, I can relax, drink my water and not worry about anything for a few hours. Today's food is once again, spicy sausage bolognese. That was just such a wonderful treat last time. It's the last of my foods until I get back to my food cache. I have enough for breakfast tomorrow, but that's it. So, and that's uh, 60, 70 kilometers away. Uh, anyhow, and here's a picture of my water boiling. Uh, what my plan is, is to go to the Chateau McDonald, stock up on some food there, and also hopefully hitch a ride back to Port Menier. And if that happens, and I'm hoping it does, then that's the end of the bike packing part of the trip, but not the end of the trip. And I'd be pretty happy with that. That said, I think the idea of caching was a good one. Um, I don't think I would have made it to uh, Bay de la Tour without the caching system. I'm, I'm really sure I wouldn't have because 
the weight of the batteries and everything. Um, but I feel a bit like uh, the uh, Antarctic explorer Robert Scott, Robert Falcon Scott, who did the same thing and reached his goal, which was the South Pole, but on the way back wasn't able to make it to one of his caches, uh, got caught up in a blizzard and perished. No danger of that happening here, uh, but still, same plan, different result.